Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm reviewing Grant's Triple Wood Blended Scotch Whiskey. As per usual, this review has been conducted using the Bespoke Unit Whiskey Matrix, a quantifiable review formula that you can either use at home for your own reviews, or if you don't have time to watch the entirety of this video, just look in the description below where you'll find the final written version, which will provide you with the PDF version of this uh, very matrix, and a quick overview of the whiskey and its characteristics. William Grant & Sons is one of Scotland's oldest family-run and independent whisky companies. It was founded in 1887, and soon after it was created, it had already built the Glenfiddich and Balvenie distilleries. Specialising in both single malts and blends, Grant's is one of its most well-known labels, which is also, incidentally, one of Scotland's oldest family-owned Scottish blends. This is the Triple Wood, which is probably not the oldest of them. In fact, I couldn't find this in the USA. It's widely available in Europe, but there are other lines, including the Caribbean cask, as well as the Family Reserve. Its distinctive bottle was created in 1957 by Hans Schläger. He created this triangular-shaped bottle, which is still used for just about all of the Grant's uh, range and this was updated in 2002 to have a slightly more modern design. The triple wood is aged using three different casks, as the name suggests. It uses virgin oak, American oak, and ex-bourbon, and the majority of the whiskey is sourced from its own Girvan uh, distillery uh, as a base, and is then blended with other whiskies, mostly owned by the William Grant's name. Anyway, that's enough history, and let's jump straight into the review. So we're going to start by looking at the robe. So here in my very fingerprint-covered uh, Glencairn glass, we have a slightly amontillado sherry colour. Um, I'm not there yet. It's not quite as clear as I wanted. Now, that was before I saw the fingerprints. I'm actually using the uh, the matrix for this. But there is a slight haziness and you occasionally can get a little bit of sediment. In terms of legs, they're a little bit thin and they're quite fast to run down the sides of the glass. And you will expect to get some uh, visometric potential, some whirls in this when you add a bit of water because it isn't chill filtered. Now let's jump into the nose. It's quite intense with a nice unctuous nose feel with a diverse variety of notes. It's indeed quite intricate and lucid as well. You're going to get nice uh, variety of notes. It's predominantly dominated by toffee, but you're also going to get some fresh pear in there, and that is quite a distinctive note. And another thing I'd like to add is some bread, bread and butter pudding. So you have some of the vanilla, you have some of the, uh, the yeastiness of the bread, the creaminess, the oiliness of the butter, as well as the sweetness from the pudding and the way it's just been roasted away in the oven. So now with all that being said, I think the next thing to look at is the palette. So, bottoms up. Quite a fiery mouthfeel but very pleasant nonetheless. Very sweet, sweet primary flavour. So I noted here in the opening, we're going to get some toffee, a bit of bittersweet grapefruit, a little bit of citrus, and some fresh walnut. And then as that subsides and moves into the heart, you're going to see some lemongrass, nice bit of zestiness, which is continued from the grapefruit, some red apple and short crust, short crust pastry, which really, for me, evokes a nice fresh apple pie has a velvety mouthfeel. It's uh, quite complex. This, for a blend, this is excellent. And it isn't that youthful if you compare it to other blends such as, uh, for example, J&B or Famous Grouse. These are going to be a lot more youthful. This, you can tell, has been aged or the various whiskies that have been used in the blend have been aged a little longer. And then in, going into the finish, if you don't mind, I'm just going to take another one. So it doesn't linger all that long on the palate. It can fade after a couple of, uh, couple of good seconds, but you're still gonna get some of the malt that lingers there on the palate. So the finish really consists of, you're gonna get some caramel, so which is a nice kind of summary of the previous notes with some soft vanilla 
uh, that's just gonna add a little bit of sweet spiciness to it. And then some malt, as I mentioned earlier, that really does linger for quite a while. You may get a hint of fruit, maybe some overripe bananas or something like that, but they don't really uh, come into the fore quite as much as the caramel and malt. Next, we're gonna talk about the overall experience. So really looking at the bottle, which is uh, an iconic design. This triangular shaped bottle has been around since 1957, as I mentioned, and it really does stand out from the crowd. Uh, fit, fits very comfortably into the hand when serving, and it looks great. Uh, you have the uh, family uh, coat of arms here pressed into the glass at the back, and a distinctive label at the front. And then in terms of the packaging, there is none. Uh, occasionally you can get uh, grants in packaging, but usually it's uh, reserved for things like Glenfiddich that they also have, which is then in a tube, and you just have a regular screw top. And in terms of value, so most grants uh, blends, they're gonna come around $27 in the USA, whereas I picked this up for just over, or just around 15 euros. It's quite affordable, really good value. And then for the occasion, this is actually a blended scotch that is very versatile. You can drink it quite happily, casually, but don't be afraid to uh, enjoy it in more formal occasions or even serve it uh, when you're going to have uh, some guests over. It goes down very, very nicely and it has a good presentation that would be perfectly suitable for occasions if you want to have an alternative to a single malt or if you don't quite have the budget for something a lot more lavish. And that leads me now onto pairings. And this isn't scored, this is just a consideration we have at the bottom left-hand corner of the uh, whiskey matrix. It's just really a thought experiment and an exercise to give you a couple of ideas. So firstly, in terms of dishes, I would really consider this to be something that you'd enjoy with maybe a couple of sides. So you could have some dark chocolate that would really bring out the gourmand properties of this whiskey. You could also go for some fresh walnuts, since that is a, a, a note that's in the opening, or dried fruit. So that could really help bring out the fruitiness, whether that be raisins, figs, or dates. They're a really good choice. And at Bespoke Unit, we love cigars. Uh, I would go for something, I put down full bodied, but medium to full is fine. Medium would be perhaps better to get the, a good, nice balance between the two, because you don't want to have one stronger than the other when pairing cigars and whiskey. Um, but here I have a Placencia Alma de Fuego. This is a, a very spicy cigar. It's got very uh, strong uh, character. It could be quite pleasant with this whiskey. It is a great choice. It's a, a lovely Maduro cigar. But if this isn't, if this is going to be too heavy for you, either go for Placencia's El Mef Fuerte, or you could go for something like an Oliva, a Siri V Milanio Maduro. That would be a great choice as well. Overall, Grants is a very pleasant blended scotch. It's very easy to drink, it's full of flavor, has a good bit of complexity. For its price point, it's not unbeatable because there's some other good blends out there. Don't be frightened to try them out, but it is an excellent surefire choice that probably won't disappoint you. Anyway, that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and leave us a comment if you have any questions about Grants or if you'd like to share your own experiences and your thoughts on the beverage. Until our next video, why don't you head to bespokeunit.com and see all the other lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'm sure that there'll be something that you will love.